the best day of Jay Wise's life. Now, the best day of your life may have been a day where you had great fun. You may have gone to the theme park with your friend, gone on holiday with your cousin, or you got married to your partner. The best day of Jay Wise's life is the day he achieved something great. Yeah, I really felt like I leveled up. Friday, the 2nd of December, 2016. I remember it like it was yesterday. But in August of 2016, right near the end, you know the Notting Hill Carnival period? I went on two holidays. Prague, then Dubai. Shout out my friend Oz. Yeah, He accompanied me on both of those holidays. Good holidays too. Came back from both of those holidays in September. And my birthdays towards the end of uh, September. So I'm getting ready to turn 24. Now, being 24 was gonna allow me to take my motorbike test. So long as I pass it, I can get a full unrestricted license. Now you think to yourself, you know, like I've been riding bikes since I was 19, even 16, I had mopeds in there. But I had a bike since I was 19. Why did I not take my motorbike test in between that time? Now, I was riding legally yeah, on a provisional license, but I had a 125 engine, which is a small engine. Why did I not take my motorbike test before that, yeah, like when I was 22, 23? Well, if you take your test under the age of 24, you get a restricted bike license. That means you can only ride a certain power of motorbike. Now, the bike that I wanted to get Obviously, it exceeded that power. So, in order for me to ride that motorbike, I would have to take my motorbike test when I was 23 on a restricted license, wait two years, take the motorbike test again, and then get a full unrestricted license. Why well, I weren't willing to take my motorbike test twice. So, I waited five years from the age of 19 to 24 to sit my exam, because I'm not taking no motorbike test twice. Yeah? I decided, you know what, I'll wait five years, when I turn 24, I'll take the test one time, pass it, and then I can get a full unrestricted bike license and ride whatever motorbike I wanted. Now the particular bike I wanted was a Yamaha R6. Looking online, Gumtree, looking on Auto Trader and that, and I saw one that I thought I would like. Went up to Northwest London, viewed the bike, and I don't know, man, there was just something about this motorbike, man. I just, uh, I don't know, man. It was the bike I wanted, but there was something about this bike. I don't know what it was. It wasn't the colour or nothing. Like, it was a nice colour. It was a gunmetal grey, but I just got this feeling. And I was talking to one of my work colleagues when I used to work for the council. And he said, go and view a few bikes. But one thing, let me tell you this right now. Yeah? Don't bother look at the service history and you know, all the maintenance they've done on the bike over the years. The thing with buying bikes is when you go to view that motorbike, yeah, forget about the paperwork and all that service history and stuff, you will just get this feeling yeah, and you will know, regardless of the paperwork and the service history, you will know that's the motorbike that you want to buy. That's why you looked at that previous bike that you saw, yeah, all the paperwork is intact, but there was something about this bike, you, you just, you couldn't put your finger on it, but you just didn't want to buy that bike, and it? it's just feeling that you get inside, yeah. So keep searching for bikes, and when you come across that bike, you will just get this instinctive feeling, you know that that's the bike that you're supposed to buy. So, I went all the way from London to a place called Corby, which is in Northamptonshire, funny enough, Northamptonshire. I drove all the way up, from London to Corby, it took me two hours to get to this place. Turn up to this guy's house, and again, the motorbike was, exact, was the exact same colour as the previous bike that I saw that I didn't like. Yeah. So there was no difference cosmetically, you know, between the two bikes. They were roughly the same age as well, had the same service history and all the paperwork was all intact. But when I saw this bike, as soon as the guy opened up his side entrance where he kept the bike, I took a look at this bike, and as soon as I saw it, I said, yes, this is the bike. Again, paperwork, you know, the age of the bike was all pretty much the same, but there was something about this bike. I was like, yeah, this is the bike. 
I viewed the bike for 10 minutes, didn't even start the bike, just took a look around the bike. And then I said, I'll be back tomorrow. I went home and yeah, funny enough, yeah, lucky enough, I went up the next day. Yeah, I took my cousin, we hiked, we took his van up there and yeah, bought the bike. I just rode the bike around the guy's estate just a couple of times just to make sure that the bikes were okay to ride. And then yeah, put the bike in the back of the van and drove back to London. Now, in November of 2016, I planned to resign from work March the 31st of 2017. Yeah. So I thought to myself, right, boom. Before I resign from work and go self-employed, I want to buy a property. Yeah, I've got a pay slip. I've got three months worth of pay slips and stuff because that's what you kind of need to get a mortgage. Now, some mortgage brokers and some mortgage lenders, they will allow you to buy a property on just a contract. So for example, if you earn 30,000, for the year as long as you got the contract they will accept that they don't care about how many pay slips but i just thought all right boom i've got this job now i've got this full-time job let me use this to my advantage let me buy a property before i resign from work and go self-employed because i know it's going to be more difficult for me to buy a property so i went up to northampton and i viewed between seven and nine properties all in one day you know that like man was driving up and down like a lunatic that day and property number five I tapped in the postcode on my phone and everyone who goes to visit this property for whatever reason always gets lost because it's sat in a, in a weird place. And when I went to go and view this property, it took me around the back and I got lost on this council estate. Walking around for 10 minutes. I feel so where the hell is this property? I can't find it. I just want to give up because I've got somewhere else to view as well. I can't be wasting time walking around. Called the estate agent. Yo, listen, I can't find this property. I'm going to leave, you know. He said, oh, look, I'm here in the house. Let me meet you at the top of the road and then I'll take you inside. Anyway, met him at the top of the road. And went inside the property. Now, the photos on the super, I didn't really do the property much justice. Walked around the property. I thought, hmm, this property is actually all right. You know, it's better than the actual pictures on the super. Went in the bathroom, went in all the bedrooms and that. Then I left. Just as he was about to lock the door, I thought, let me go back in there one more time. Had another look around. Yeah. Again, I don't know if I viewed between seven and, or nine properties, but anyway, I viewed the rest of the properties and literally I didn't leave Northampton until about eight o'clock. Went home. And as I'm driving back from Northampton, I stopped in Milton Keynes, went to Wagamama's. And I was thinking, yeah, you know what? Property number five, you know, that one was actually all right. Got back home and I thought, you know what? Let me put in an offer. Now the property was on the market for 140. Decided, let me go a bit lower. Yeah. Maybe I should have went a bit lower than this, but I said, let me, let me go a bit lower. Offered 136. So I was gonna call the estate agent at like 10 o'clock at night, but I thought, let me just send him a text. Um, yeah, I'm willing to put in an offer for 136,000, whatever. Cool. Obviously, he didn't get back to me that night, which is cool. The next day, he didn't. I didn't hear anything from him, so I just called him just to see if he got my text. Yeah, he got my text. Boom, boom, boom. He said he's going to put the offer in to the vendor. That's cool. So, a couple of days is going by. I haven't heard nothing. You know, nothing from the vendor. Nothing like that. So, these times, you know, a couple of weeks have gone by now, and it still ain't heard nothing from the vendor. You know, he's contacted the vendor and the vendor's not responding. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, I kind of lost hope. And these times, man's all, I'm all like fantasizing over this property. Like, yeah, I'm gonna put my sofas here. I'm gonna put my bike in the house here. I'm gonna do this and do that. And yeah, I didn't hear nothing back from the vendor, innit? Now, it's the 20th of November. I ain't heard nothing back for a good week and a bit. Yeah, ain't heard nothing from no estate agent, no vendor, nothing. 20th of November, I sit my motorbike theory test. Bit like a car theory test, but it's relative to motorbikes. Been practicing every day for a month, half an hour. Passed it first time, cool. I booked my motorbike training a week and a bit later. So I started it 
on the 29th of November. Now, the motorbike training is a bit like a car crash course. You will do a five day course. If it's a car crash course, you do a five day course and maybe on the last day you do an exam. With the motorbike training, it's usually three or four days and an exam on the last day, which is pretty much half a day anyway. 29th of November, I started my motorbike training. Yeah. Day one, they take you out on the road, make sure you know how to ride a bike, take you to a car park, make you practice for the whole day, riding around cones, emergency stops, avoiding obstacles, U-turns, all of that. Obviously, I knew how to ride before, but you still have to brush up on your techniques because if you put your foot down, you fail during the exam. Yeah. There's no minors, everything is a major. Yeah, this is motorbikes, there's no room for error. So, done the, you know, practicing on a day one, day two comes now. Early in the morning, about 10 o'clock, I sit my module one, 10, 15 minutes in a car park next to the test center. Bearing in mind, people are watching you take this exam, so that's our next stress. Module one, 10, 15 minutes riding around in this car park next to the test center, you know, Riding around cones, emergency stop, U-turn, avoiding obstacles. Again, if you put your foot down, you fail. Luckily, man a rider. Man passed it first time. That's with all the, the stress and the pressure of people watching you. The next stress is you have to pass module one in order to progress to module two. So that's extra pressure on you. Yeah. So end of day two. Just doing a little bit more riding. Now we're more focusing on the on-road stuff, yeah, which is module two practice. Module two is obviously just riding around on the road, just doing basically the same stuff you do in a car, but on a motorbike, yeah. Day three comes. Again, practicing on the road, riding up and down. End of day three. I receive a text message from one of my friends. I finally passed my, my, my car test. Yeah, I finally passed my driving test after my fifth attempt. The man failed this test like five times. So now that's put extra pressure on me. I'm thinking, damn, I need to pass this motorbike test. We're going out for a Taekwondo Christmas meal in a couple of days. I want to be able to share the story. Like, yeah, I'll pass as well. Before I went to bed that night, you know, I said to myself, I don't believe in God or the supernatural or nothing like that. But I said to myself, Jay, and I looked at myself in the mirror, if you pass this exam tomorrow, you will get a phone call from the estate agent to say that the vendor has accepted your offer. Yeah? The next day, I already had this day booked off. The next day, I went for my motorbike module two practical test on the road. Had the examiner behind me on a separate motorbike. Could have failed it as well. Actually was riding down a road that's a, a, 20, uh, a 30 mile an hour road doing like 23 miles an hour. He let me off because there was a car in front of me. So I kind of got let off the hook. Obviously, you're allowed minors on the practical test. Um, obviously, if you get a major, you fail. Anyway, he could tell by my riding techniques that, you know, I was good enough to pass. So luckily, man passed that exam first time. Yeah. Just like my car test, I could have failed it as well. Just like, you know, a motorbike test could have failed it, but I passed it first time. So that was around 11 o'clock. 4 p.m., that same day, I was sitting in the barber chair, getting my hair cut. Yeah, John Barber, shout out John Barber, lining man up correctly. Yeah. I'm getting my hair cut. My phone rings. I back out the phone. I see focal point estate agents. I take the phone call outside. Hello? Hi, it's Ashley from Focal Point Estate Agents. How are you? I'm well, how are you doing? Yeah, cool. I'm pleased to say that the vendor has accepted your offer of £136,000. We can now proceed for you buying the property. 
I was so happy. Words cannot describe how happy I felt at that time. I knew it. And as I said, I don't believe in God or the supernatural, but I just knew. If I passed that exam first time, then I knew I was going to get that property. I knew it was going to be mine. So, yeah, we just went through the process and stuff like that, and eventually I bought the property. Now, I, that exam I done when I passed it was on Friday. The next day, I went out for the Christmas meal, was able to share the experience of how I passed the test with my friend who also passed this test. And Sunday, I wanted to take out the motorbike, but unfortunately, the post office and that was all closed, so I couldn't tax the motorbike. Because, I, again, I never took out this motorbike. I left it in the back garden. I'm disciplined like that. I can, you know, resist temptation. So Monday, man done a little naughty thing at work. Yeah. I drove my van into work, parked it up, and I made my way back home. So to make it look like I was still at work, because I had parked my work van on, on near my work office. Made my way back home, and I took the bike out so I can get MOT'd and taxed. Let me tell you, that's the first time I rode this bike on the road. It was the best riding experience I've ever had. Because I never rode a big motorbike like that before. So it was just like, ah, oh, that was probably the best day riding my bike as well. Yeah. The attention I was getting on the road, I really felt like I owned the road. I still feel like I own the road now when I ride my motorbike. But that day, that Monday, that was the best riding experience I ever had. The first day I ever took out the bike, man, it was, it was the best. It was the best. Like, words cannot describe how I felt on that day. Man. But yeah, so... The day that, Friday the 2nd of December 2016, that was the best day of my life. Because I achieved two things I was passionate about. I was passionate about riding my motorbike. Yeah. Passionate about passing as I'm riding the motorbike. And I was passionate. I had my heart set on buying that property. And now I'm making this video for you in that same property I was fantasizing about. You know why I was able to pass the motorbike exam and get the house? Because I worked for both of them. I worked for both of them. Thanks for enjoying that story, yeah? Stay wise.